Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this Johnny Harris style map animation. This video was a request by one of our students. If you wanna join our Flatpak FX crew and download these project files, or make your own requests, then you can check out our Flatpak FX crew. There'll be a link in the description below. I also include this bonus composition as part of the download. So I just take it a little bit further on what we're gonna be doing in this video. So the first thing I've got here is just my map. Now this can be whatever map you like. I've just found a royalty free map here. It is included as part of the download. Now what I'm going to do is create a new composition from selection. Now this is the best way to make any of these map animations is by creating a basic comp with all of the, that map or whatever your screenshots are, satellite screenshots in this one composition, then you can do all your animation and then it makes it really easy to go through and animate all of that stuff. So you can make this 3D at this point. What I'm going to do is create a new composition here. This one can be called our main comp and this one we're going to set a bit lower in resolution, 1920 by 1080. Again, this can be whatever settings you want as your main video file. Then I'm gonna drag that composition that we created, which is that map to into this one, scale it down. And then I can make this now 3D and I can also turn on the rasterize. That's gonna help make it a bit higher quality as we're zooming into it because it's much larger resolution than the composition that we're working on. Now, back in that map composition, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool here and I don't want anything selected because all I'm going to do is just select the area of the country that I want to basically highlight. Now this is one way of doing this. You could just find say like an outline or a map of that particular area that you wanna highlight and then overlay it if you wanna be exactly sort of accurate. But this is absolutely fine and it does the same sort of thing for what we're trying to do here. Now I can turn back on the fill layer. I don't want a stroke on this. And this can be sort of like the color that you want to highlight it. In. And we should end up with something that looks like this. Now what we want to do now is basically draw out our path of, you know, maybe it's like a point sort of showing where the ships are going or it could be for trade or whatever you're trying to represent in your map but basically for this one what we do is we don't want a fill so we're just going to set this to have no fill and i can set the stroke color to basically be a very similar color to that area that we just highlighted so this orange sort of color here and then i'm just going to sort of draw out a line here which sort of represents the path of travel something like that and then what i can do is i can just rename this one to path and this one's going to be my map highlight now with the path i'm just going to scale this down slightly and I can also set this one to be multiply so that it blends into a map. So we should have something that's looking like this. Next, I wanna basically have this sort of like fade on. So what I'm going to do is grab my map highlight and I can go down to the opacity by hitting T. And I wanna start by sort of just maybe making this zero, go across a few frames, scale this up, something like that and then bring this back down, not to fully back to zero, but just sort of up like that, and then maybe back up to 100. So we kind of get this flashing on or like this sort of fade on effect. You can mess around with those settings to get more or less, bring them closer together if you want it a bit faster, even slow it down. You can even make these easy ease will help will help the overall animation just kind of sink in and that's looking pretty good. What I also want to do is with my path, I also want to do the same thing. But for this, what I'm gonna do is just copy those opacity keyframes that we've already created and just basically paste them onto that layer. So we get the same thing happening there. But with this one, what I want to do is just rename this one to basically be like the orange color, just so I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna duplicate it. And with the one, with that one that we just duplicated, I'm just gonna rename this one. 
as the path because we don't want to have a color on this one. So what I'm going to do is just make this white. Now the problem with making this layer white is if we bring up those opacity keyframes, what I want to do is basically delete these keyframes here. With that first one, what I'm going to do is have this set to be like 70%. And what I want to do, the problem with white is it won't work as a multiply blending mode. So we need to change this to be normal. And if I scale down on this opacity, maybe like 60 or 70 or something around that, what I want to happen is I want this to then fade to zero over the course of that one fading on. Now you can adjust this one in slightly to delay that sort of fade off effect. But basically we want the white one to disappear and we want that orange one to sort of fade in over the top. So we kind of end up with this effect. Now, if you want more or less of that, you can just dial this up. But basically that's all we're doing to create that line. This is just a really simple way of doing this. Now, once we've got all those, we can make all those layers 3D and that's just going to help basically when we go back to our main composition and we're going to create now a camera which is going to be used for uh, animation. So now what we can do is we can bring the camera in here and I'm just cycling through my camera tools by hitting C on the keyboard and I'm just going to basically bring the camera down like this and then sort of bring this down something like that till we kind of get our starting point create a point of interest and a position keyframe go to the end of the composition and then bring the camera back sort of to an overhead view now the camera tool can be a little bit tricky to work with if you're relatively new to After Effects. If you're brand new to the program or you wanna become more comfortable using the program, say you've used it a few times, then you definitely wanna check out my Animation Master course or my Animation Pro course for intermediates. But in my Animation Master for beginners, I basically walk you through how to use the program even if you've never used it before right through to creating some really cool animations all inside of After Effects. I've had students who have no prior knowledge about how to do any animation or using After Effects go right through to creating some really cool animations that they've been using in their own videos now online. If you're more of an intermediate and you wanna become more comfortable in After Effects or you wanna advance your skills, then check out my Animation Pro course. We dive even deeper into After Effects to create really cool animations that stand out and capture people's attention. I teach you all about layering techniques, but the main thing that I really focus on in both courses is using the camera tools or creating 3D dynamic movements, which is a large part of what we do in animations. So it's really creates that dynamic camera movements to really make your animation stand out. So I show you really how to master those things and really understand how to use those tools for creating animations. You can check out both courses via the links in the description and read all of the student testimonials. The next thing we're going to do is just turn on motion blur. And this is really where the magic happens because I'm gonna scale up on this aperture. Then I can adjust the focal point. So as I'm scaling this back, you can hold shift if you wanna move this faster forward and backwards. I'm just gonna scale up a little bit more. And then I can set a focal distance point here. And as I move along with my timeline, I'm going to readjust that so it kind of lines up now, you know, shifts the point of focus. You can even scale up on this aperture if you want a shallower depth of field. So something like this is starting to look quite good. Maybe bring the camera up towards the top of my screen right here so you can sort of animate that movement now what i can do is when the camera roughly gets to here i'm going to go back to my map comp you can see this is why you want to do this all in one composition because it makes it much easier to animate all of this stuff in this main composition first so once i've got that i'm just going to drag this across so that it sort of animates on at that point that the camera 
sort of comes into view. So, uh, so for this first part, we want to highlight this section. And that's essentially what I did here in my original composition is I just created another one. So I just repeated that process by creating another line here by just duplicating it, changing the colors, basically drawing out another line following those exact same steps. And that is how I created that basically that movement of the camera and created that fade on effect. Now, again, in the bonus composition, I take this even further. So if you're part of the Flatpak FX crew, you can download this. It includes this animation of this little point here and actually creates a bit more of a dynamic sort of movement. The last thing that I sort of added over the top was a bunch of effects. And this is really where you make the magic happen, really make it sort of pop and stand out. Basically to do this, what I did is I right click and I create a new adjustment layer. And that to that adjustment layer, I apply a bunch of different effects. I'm gonna turn off all of these as we work through them. But the first thing I added was a vignette. Now you can find all of these by searching for them up here and then just dragging them into this effects control for that adjustment layer. But this is basically the settings if you want to match exactly. Just kind of creates that dark and edge, really sort of helps the viewer focus in. I then add an unsharpened mask. This adds a bit of sharpness to your animation, just helps it stand out. Then I add the what we call the VR chromatic aberration. It sort of adds that RGB sort of split. It just kind of creates this really nice, interesting look to your animation. They're the exact settings that I've used. The last thing I added was the curves, and this just really adds a bit of contrast into the image, makes it pop. I just created a small S curve here, and that really just makes the whole thing stand out. Again, in my Animation Pro course, I really focus a lot on all of these layering and effects because this can really make your animation stand out. Because I know a lot of students get to the point that they're happy with the animation, but it just doesn't look great. You know, it doesn't really stand out or pop. So this is it's sort of like the icing on the cake. This is how you really make, you know, all of this stuff really stand out. It's like adding a really good color grade to your video footage. So it can really make a huge difference to all of this stuff. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks you can use in your own videos. If you love this video, you can give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. You can also check out more videos just like this over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.